Hi, hi, everyone. Welcome to the show. You're listening to the I Am Real Estate Show with the Johnson Smith team at Indy Realty. And we're here with our great sponsor, John Spur with Inspired Life Mortgage. How you doing, John? I'm good. And yourself? I'm doing great. And how you doing, Sandra? Hey, I'm fantastic. Hoping, First, it, hoping it gets better, but I'm fantastic for yeah. now. I uh, wanted to start the show with this, is that this is the, out the new year. So my question to you guys is that when is it okay to stop wishing everybody a happy new year? Oh, jeez. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> uh, gra- Groundhog Day? I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I always thought it was maybe that after the second week of January, I shouldn't have to say Happy New Year to anybody else. I'm pretty much done with it. New Year's gone. Well, I'm so confused. I'm still saying Merry Christmas. So. <laughs> <laughs> like, can we just all agree the Christmas lights can come down now? Yes. Agreed. All right. We'll, we'll settle that's, on that. That's unanimous. <laughs> no more Christmas lights. But someone has some pretty ones up. I'm like, oh, if you can keep them up all year, I'd be really impressed. But I'm sure someone's going to say well, something. Well, I can. I don't have an HOA. I do whatever I want. <laughs> 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 Sorry, everybody. We just wanted. To, I, that was a question. I just been thinking all day about that because I met someone and they and I didn't know whether to say Happy New Year to them. I just go on and start saying How you doing? And go talk about business. So I I was confused for like thirty seconds. So I'm making everybody else confused. Thank you. You're all you're all welcome. Hasa. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to my life. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. We're here with uh, John Spur. We want to talk a little bit about the lending industry and and what's going on. Some of the trends. Remember, we're starting 2023, and how do you think 2023 is starting, and what do you think is going to be happening in the first quarter? Well, I have already seen an uptick in people getting pre-qualified. Um, the numbers came out last week from, um, I think it's FHFA that puts them out, but basically they've seen an uptick in people getting pre-qualified and people pulling credit records for new home purchases. So that's a very good sign because there just haven't been... Um, a lot of new applicants out there in right. the last two or three weeks. And so I think that's a great sign just for the real estate market in itself that mm-hmm. we're already seeing people expressing interest in buying a home. Um, rates have been, I, I would say, good. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. happy with what they're doing. They're continuing a downward trend. Uh, I think October was the peak, and we're just going to continue to see them drop. Every so often, we'll have a little spike here and there. Um, CPI came out today, and... It was just flat. There wasn't really anything special about it, and the bond market just pushed right on through, and we saw a little improvement in rates today also. That's really good news, and the thing we were hearing is that people are afraid to come into the market because of the rate and because of these other reasons, and we're trying to find a way to, to remind them that you should never be afraid. You should always have someone to talk to, talk to your lender or talk to your agent to give you the idea of what the market is and why, what you can do when you get in there, and don't be afraid to come in. I've been telling a lot of people that said they're, they think it's a bad time to buy because of interest rates or because of the um, home prices and home values possibly going up or going down. Yeah. And I keep telling them you need to invest in yourself. If you're renting, you're investing in somebody else. You're not investing in yourself. If you have the money for the down payment and you have a stable job and you have decent credit, it's always a good time to buy. Okay. Stop investing in somebody else. If you mm-hmm. rent, your rate is 100%. We say that all the time. <laughs> yep, your interest rate's 100%. And then the other thing is, if you look at signing a lease for a year, calculate what you're spending in that year. Probably Absolutely. over $12,000. We could say pretty oh, easily, twelve to 24000 And that money is gone. And you've got nothing for it. Where if you had invested in yourself, you would have some equity in your home. Absolutely. Not to mention, and or let's not forget that that home value is going to continue to go up. So that's equity that you're going to get over time. Um, I mean, just a general trend in real estate over long periods of time right. is mm-hmm. values go up. We do yep. see dips, but values go up. Uh, but I just, if, if you can invest in yourself today, that's going to just compound 5%, 10%, 20%, 100%. Uh, I mean, my parents bought their house in 1972 for $23,000, I believe, is what they paid for it. And they don't live in it anymore. They haven't for a very long time. But I know it just sold for over $375,000. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's there's just invest in yourself. Stop investing in somebody right. else and stop renting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was a point. I, I purchased my home in 2004. And there was a point that the housing prices really came back down to what I paid in 2004. But because over that, you know, decade or plus of time, I was paying myself 
my equity actually was fantastic, even though the price had dropped back down. And then, of course, the market comes back up, and now, you know, the equity is even better yet um, due to the co combination of the fact that I'm paying myself and that the the pricing is back up again. So, and isn't there another good thing <clears throat> that I think you brought this up a, a couple months ago is that your mortgage price is going to be the same. That every year you rent, it always it's always going to go up, but that mortgage thing stays where you know you can be st stable and knowing what you're going to pay. Every month, and you can keep your bills together. No, exactly. You do a 30 year fixed, and your interest rate is fixed. So, your principal interest payment is never going to change. Your taxes and interest can fluctuate a little bit, go up and down, mm -hmm. but you're not going to have a 10%, 15%, or 20% rent increase like you would if you kept renting. Right. Or, even worse than that, and we've seen it happen, is a lot of these landlords are at a point where, hey, I, I'm selling this house. The values mm -hmm. are up. I'm not going to re rent it to you. I'm selling it. And it's already hard to find a place to rent or a home to buy, and all of a sudden, you're being told that your lease isn't getting renewed in a house you've been in for five or six years. Uh, I've seen that a lot lately. Where you need your first and last month down payment, I mean monthly payment, you're gonna have that, and you gotta have your, your monthly payment for your rent, and then you don't know what your electric bills are gonna be, you have nothing, and if there's anything out there nowadays. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you gotta think about school districts and, you know, driving to work or to, right. to places that you right. frequent. Yeah, and, and you kind of lose control of uh -huh. that. Oh, well, the other thing I've heard frequently is I'm priced out of the market or I can't find a home I can afford. And we're actually working with a couple now. And it's really, there's homes out there for every uh, segment and for every wage earner and for and how much, what you can afford. You just have to hunt for them and look for them. But I don't feel like everybody's been priced out of a home. There mm -hmm. are opportunities and there right. are options out there. We just have to work together as a team and help find that for you. <clears throat> and understanding options, that sometimes options are not going to be that if, you, if you're making $25,000 a year, you're not going to be able to afford a $400,000 house, even though it's what you're looking for. I mean, obviously, reality has to sit in somewhere. Yeah, no, we have to, you have to have the right expectations uh, right. In, in looking at homes that are going to be in the price range that you can afford. Yeah. But again, would you rather pay an apartment complex a thousand dollars a month for your, you know, two bedroom, one bathroom apartment, or would you rather go make your own mortgage payment of a thousand dollars a month for a two bedroom, two bathroom condo that is yours that you can do what you want with? Right, and then too, you know, we you've talked before about with interest rates, um, you marry the house and you date the rate, so there's always a chance that you can come back in and refinance that and see a savings there. But also a lot of people are just building equity and then they are gonna move on to buy that dream home. Absolutely, uh, and there's always gonna be an opportunity to refinance and the one thing we know about mortgage rates is every time they've come down in the last 30 years, they've always gone to a new historic low. So right. eventually mm -hmm. we will see a very low rate again. Mm -hmm. I think I was 19 when um, I I was one of two people on the title of the first house. Um, and so, well, we're actually we're in a red break. So we'll pick up with that thought when we come back. Yeah, we're here, we're here with the owner of Inspired Life Mortgage. That's John Spur. We'll catch you on the other side. And we're going to talk a little bit more about lending with a, a great lender and sponsor. Hi, everyone. We're back with John Spur, the owner of Inspired Life Mortgage, talking a little bit about lending and what is going on with the future of the lending process and as we move forward into 2023. You see any good news, bad news? What are you looking at? Oh, we get both. Um, I mean, there's there's good news in the sense that uh, we are seeing some leniency coming out of the automated underwriting when it goes to purchase transactions. There's, we're getting a little bit mm -hmm. uh, more transactions approved. We started seeing appraisal waivers again, which is great. Great. Um, on the refinance side, they're tightening up uh, investment properties. They're making it more and more difficult for people to purchase uh, investment properties um, because they feel like they want that uh, that housing market available for first time home buyers mm -hmm. because there's a housing shortage. So it's yeah. getting more difficult to buy a second home or an investment property. Oh, it's, it's, it is getting more difficult. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, larger down payments, higher interest rates. They're just making it less attractive. Is that because they want more single home family for other people instead of someone having two homes? They want you trying to 
make it equitable? They're just, it's truly their way of trying to control the housing shortage right now and make sure mm-hmm. that there's enough homes for first-time home buyers. So okay. making it more difficult for investment property in second home. Okay. Yeah, it's true because a lot of um, what we were seeing um, over the last year is that these first-time home buyers are competing with an investor. Right. And I think it does level yeah. the playing field just a little bit and gives a little more opportunity because when that investor purchases the home, that buyer that was looking at it, it they're not going to have a, the same rate as the mortgage. They're going to be paying an inflated rate if they have to come back and rent that same house. Well, I've talked about loan level pricing adjustments before. It's a you know, fancy sentence for uh, a charge for what type of financing you're doing. Right. Two years ago, if you were buying a second home, your loan level pricing adjust- adjustment was three quarters of a percent. Today, it's four and an eighth. Wow. wow. So they're just making it so that rate is so unattractive that not many people are looking at doing that second home financing. Mm-hmm. You know, before we went to the break, I was starting to say when I was 19, I purchased my first home. And it was $42,000, which seemed like a lot of money back then. Um, but it was that home purchase that built equity that allowed me to go into a nicer home because I was a three bedroom, one bath home. It was in Oregon. Um, and you take that equity and we were able to get into a better home. But then when an unexpected life event occurs, then now we ended up um, using that equity to to be able to start a business. And I think those are the kind of investments in yourself that do make a difference in in your well, in not just your lifetime, but generationally. Yeah. 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 Generationally I, I make mean, a I, difference. I don't know, purchased six or seven homes in my lifetime, and I've taken that equity and rolled it into another home, rolled it into another home, and I, you know, I'm not 50 yet, I'm getting close, but the house we're in is the house I think we're going to die in, and we'll be done with it in about five years, just because we bought bought small and worked our way up and continued to take that equity and use it to buy the next home, and I kind of think that's the the market we're going back into. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, We wanted to ask a little bit about uh, different types of financing. Actually, we have a listing that is in Corona de Tucson. I'll do a shameless plug here. It's at 710 East Blue Mesa Place. It's a three bedroom, two bath, 2300 square feet, view fencing, open floor plan. But when I reached out to you to ask about um, financing, you told me it qualifies for USDA financing. Correct. So USDA, yes, the people that certify our beef also do mortgage loans. I know. How, how does that happen? <laughs> uh, it, it, it started as a as a rural program for ranchers, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and they had to find areas. You couldn't go into metropolitan cities and so on and so forth. But if you were in the outskirts of a city, you could still get USDA. Um, and we have USDA zones just outside of the Tucson city limits and ranch, uh, uh, Corona, Corona Day, Day Tucson, Tucson being one of them. Uh, there's some areas out in Sarita, Green Valley, uh, some places out past uh, Tucson Mountain Park mm-hmm. that have pockets that qualify for USDA. Why is that important? Well, USDA doesn't require any down payment. So you can get into a home with no down payment, and the rates are going to be equivalent to what you would get if you were doing an FHA transaction. Uh, so the rates are great. The qualifying process is very similar to an FHA loan. They do have some oddball things like no swimming pool is one of them, I believe. Um, but it is a very great program if you can't come up with a down payment. Now, the downside to it is you are going to be living, you know, 16, 17 miles outside of the center of Tucson. But, you know, there's trade-offs. If I was going to say, I just heard you say there's less traffic around your home. <laughs> That's what I just heard. A more peaceful lifestyle, great views, Absolutely. great mountain views. So, yeah, everything's about, you know... Um, benefits, right? So an older house, we get a bigger yard most of the time. You get smaller closets. It's all about choosing those those types of things and what's most important to your family. But the zero down is huge for someone who doesn't have that nest egg to uh, put a down payment in on the house. Absolutely. And it's not, as you discovered, it's not hard to determine if an address fits for USDA or not. It's it's actually very quick and simple. Mm-hmm. Do you want to give us those areas again? Uh, we have, um, well, down where you're at with uh, Corona de Tucson, mm-hmm. there's some Vale areas, uh, Green Valley, Rancho Sarita, Sarita area, and then out past uh, the Tucson Mountain Park on the west side. 
Mm. Are there income um, qualifications for the buyer or it's all about the property? It's all about where the property is located. Awesome. That's a good thing to know. And what I was asking them as you and Sandra, is there a stigma for USDA loans? You know, there used to be one for FHA. The guys weren't great buyers. They didn't have, didn't have good credit. But for USDA loan, it's just the fact is that it's just in rural areas and you may have the capability to just you may have be a strong buyer, but why not go with the program that's out there that can work for you? No, I don't think there's anything any negative that comes along with it. And and, and I I get aggravated when I hear people say that, oh, FHA has a, a negative stigma yes. to it or VA or USDA. It's a financing tool. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, truth be told, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Jenny Mae, FHA, VA, USDA, they are all purchased by the same people in the secondary market. The money to get those loans all come from the same place. And guess what, guys? They're all backed by the federal government. It's just a different program that helps that individual get into a home. Okay, so let me do another shameless plug here. Um, that is why we work with, with you, Jonathan, is because you match our clients to the right product for them based on the property that they're looking at and based on what their financial goals are. Absolutely. We, we give options. We ask the right questions. We get to uh, take the time to figure out who you are, what your goals are, what your family life is like, where you think you're going to be in five to ten years. We help you put a budget together, and then we give you options that make sense so you can pick what works for you best. And you also kind of help people that aren't quite ready to buy yet so oh. that they have better options. Yeah, no, we look at credit and say, hey, if you wait 90 days and do this, this, and this, your credit score is going to come up, and you're going to get more options available to you. You'll have a better credit score, better rates. Um we're constantly working with our book of clients, helping them improve their credit. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, if you're looking to buy a house this year, let's start today. Even if you're not going to close until September, the more time we have to work on your credit, the more time we have to clean things up, the better your credit score is going to be and the more products will be available for you. And let's just say you don't always own those problems either. You know, you, we are the Johnson Smith team. Could you have a more generic last name than the two of us? And so sometimes it's just a name issue that you want to get cleared up and you don't want to do that once you're under contract. Absolutely. How does somebody get hold of you, John? Uh, they can get me on my cell phone at 520-247-3610 or they can always email me at john, J-O-N, at inspiredlifemortgage.com. And are you moving? We are moving. To 1951 North Wilmont, Building 1, second floor. Hey, everyone, thank you guys for listening. We have John Spur on the show, who is the owner of Inspired Life Mortgage. Next, we have uh, Rigo Arce from Pest Prevention. He's going to have him coming up on the show. Thank you for being on the show, John. We really appreciate you having time with us today. Thanks for having me. It's great. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the show. We have one of our great sponsors, Rigo Arce of Rigo Pest Prevention. He's here to talk a little bit about the pest, pest cycle. And how each quarter there's something new you need to know about the pest world. And we're well, glad to have you on here. Here you go. Hey, happy new year, everybody. It's 2023. Yeah. Okay, uh, that is so funny because uh, Raymond just asked the question, at what point during the year do you stop saying happy new year? And he caught John and I totally off guard with that. And we didn't have a good answer oh, for Oh, there's him. only one answer. What is that? January and that's it. After January, you, it's it's against the law. You can't <laughs> do that. <laughs> it's one month, and that's it. And by the way, if you're in that fourth week, you're you're behind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what I've been doing lately is I've been telling people, hey, do me a favor, stand on your right foot for me. Just stand right there. And then they do it, and I say, hey, I just want to make sure you start off the day on the right foot. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so then I added, well, I want to make sure you started the year off on the right foot. Oh, there you that's go. Awesome. But I only have till January to finish that. So okay. right. yeah, running out of time. All right. It's great. <laughs> great to see everybody. It's great to see you. Um, how's everything going for you guys? Man, uh, you know, it, uh, it it's the winter and uh-huh. so there's definitely a pivot in the pest control world. Right. Uh, you know, especially when it comes to residential. You know, the bugs out there are are really at a low level. We use the word pressure and right now that pressure is pretty low. You know, so things slow down a little bit. You know the market is kind of kind of turned a little bit. It's mm-hmm. definitely uh, uh, become a buyer's market, certainly. And uh, with that, you know the the home sales have kind of slowed down a bit. Right. So you know the the termites are running about, the rodents are running about, uh, but home sales are a little bit down. Uh, the bugs are a little quiet. So you know it, it's this is a great time. I always teach my staff this is a time to to, to clean house, uh, reset. 
do a reset. You know, make sure the truck looks good, all your equipment's clean, functioning well. Uh, you know, make sure you've got your game plan for the, you know, take care of your customers. And uh, in, in the office, you know, we go on a little bit of a collection frenzy, make sure everybody's paid up to date, file, throw away all the old files. Go, okay. And then with customers, this is a great time to really look at the house more from a prevention point of view. Right. I get asked all the time, why did you name your company Rego Pest Prevention and not Pest Control, yes, or Pest yes. Service? And mm -hmm. I, I thought about it. If you were to, if I came to your house and I was doing the outside of the house and I was doing the inside of the house and I had 30 minutes to do it, theoretically, I would need 15 minutes outside and 15 minutes inside. I would r much rather take 30 minutes, every minute of it, and work outside where the bugs already are mm -hmm. and stop them from getting in. If I cut that time in half, I'm going to limit what I do on the outside. I'm spending more time on the inside and I'm reacting. And, I, and frankly, I might be reacting to what may never happen. Right. There's no need to come inside and apply, you know, uh, pesticides and, and, you know, walk through the house. The bugs are outside and we need to prevent them from getting in. And so this is a great time of year to get the caulk gun out, some steel wool, little stucco patch, uh, you know, re redo the landscaping a little bit, trim some things back, uh, manipulate the soil so the water runs a certain way seal up some openings, get up on the roof, screen some roof vents. And, you know, it's all about prevention. And if we can put our energy and time in that regard, uh, I always say, you know, less pesticide, the better. You know, let's use tools. Let's use the environment. Let's use intelligence and uh, sanitation and, uh, you know, just kind of tighten things up. You do that, you, you'll use less pesticide and you'll see less pests. You know, and I think another benefit of that is the fact that there are so many, so much wildlife here that the least that we have to treat, the better if we can do the things that you talked about so that we're not applying more harsh chemicals than what we need to to protect our homes. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, when, uh, when the pressure is on and you feel like, you, you know, you've got a lot of bugs to deal with. A technician can can overreact, and mm -hmm. you know if a, if a uh, dab will do it, a gob will get it. You know that's a phrase that goes back way back. I think I had a gob will get it. Yeah, a gob will get it. Uh, front door. <clears throat> yeah. Um, from another company uh -huh. before we were using your company, and it was a granular, and I'm still picking up granular wow. every time my kids, my grand, my grandkids come over. Yeah. I'm like, don't go outside barefoot because I know all that granular is at my entrance. Yeah. And it didn't solve the problem. Yeah. It's not the method that you yeah. recommended, yeah. but it's still there. Right. And yeah. we're still dragging it in the house every time you walk through, you know, and it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, being proactive and, and having a, a quarterly service every three months, pest or no pest, you know, uh, you just keep up those applications, you walk the property, you make good decisions, then you don't have that overwhelming bug pressure uh, where, where someone does come in and just haphazardly apply and, and cause potential problems. You know, yeah, we want to protect the wildlife. You know, we want to mm -hmm. protect the environment. Mm -hmm. And and honestly, uh, people don't consider this, but we also want to protect the applicator. Right. You know, this is a career. You're exposed to, the, you know, the, the industry day in and day out. Uh, safety of our people is paramount. And, uh, you know, wearing the proper protective equipment, PPE, if you didn't catch that, uh, right. Yeah, you know, we got to make sure that uh, everybody is 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 safe and uh, you know minimize that hazard. I actually really appreciate that you feel that way, um, and it says a lot about you and about the company. I've seen people in the industry that you go, "Wow, they've been doing this a long time," because you can see it just in their skin, and and that they haven't been protected. You know, it's funny. I, we just uh, we're, we're putting together a new residential flyer, and I've got a new employee. He's been with me about three months. This young man looks like a model. I mean, I'm not kidding. I said, Justin, you're going to be the face on my next episode. Okay? <laughs> so we, we get him out there, and we're taking pictures and whatnot, and all the pictures come back for my approval, and I'm looking at him, and he's not wearing gloves. Oh, and I said, no. and I'm not, you know, not upset, but I said, <laughs> we can't use these pictures. We cannot market <laughs> to the community, <laughs> you know, a proper application. And the guy's got his hands, you know, and I said, no, 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 we're going to have to redo these pictures. So we're getting Justin back out there for some. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, you'll have to share that. We'll put it on our uh, Facebook page. Yeah, yeah. On the He's a great kid. We're happy to have him.
That's Are you awesome. going on a big push right now for advertising to get, get your name out yeah, there we're really get, Yeah, we're going to start moving this year. We're going to be more intentional this year on growth. You know, we've grown. I, I just feel so grateful. I can't even tell you. We've grown so organically over the last 15 years. Uh, but we've got some lofty goals moving forward. And as I mentioned on previous programs, yeah. we're really going to push a lot of commercial business. Uh, we've always done commercial, but now we're going to be intentional. Anyway, with that said, we want to get our name and brand out there more. Uh, you know, we've been voted Tucson's number one pest control company four years in a row with the uh, uh, Arizona Daily Star Reader's Choice. And, uh, you know, we want to brand those uh, those logos that we got, those badges. So we're proud of who we are, and uh, we're going to market more, and there we go. Yeah, we're here with uh, Rego RC of Rego Pest Prevention, who is one of our great sponsors. We're glad he's here. We want to thank you for tuning in. We're, we're happy that you're came in and talked to us a little bit more. I always enjoy I it. I thought that when we go into the next segment, let's talk a little bit about what uh, Rego and Rego Pest Prevention is doing for the community, what kind of things you're doing for that, that we don't hear about right on. that you do without even asking, you know, because you're a great community community team. Love it. Thanks. Okay. Hi, you're back listening to the I Am Real Estate Show on KVOI 1030 The Voice. You're here with the Johnson Smith team with Indy Realty, and we're here with uh, one of our great sponsors, Rigo Arce from Rigo Pest Prevention. How you doing, Rigos? I'm doing fantastic. Better than I'm here now. I just want to make sure everybody remember who you are because we love hearing from you. And we were talking earlier in the last segment about crawly cycles and, and bug prevention. And you wanted to elaborate a little bit on that. Yeah. You know, each, uh, well, the desert's just teeming with insects, but they, uh, you know, certain insects come out more prevalent in certain parts of the year than others. And, you know, back in the day, and, and if you're listening to the program, you, you know, you'll, if you've had pest control for years or have had it historically, monthly service was king. You know, that, mm -hmm. that's how you did it. And, and in fact, I remember 1990 when I first started, you know, you, you showed up to the house and you did the outside and next month you came back and you did the inside and then you just repeated that every other month, you know. And, uh, but monthly service was, uh, was standard. The products today are so advanced. They, they are designed to last highly engineered and as I mentioned earlier if you if you're proactive and you're thorough those products are going to really protect that home easily 60 90 days you know no problem and so the days of monthly service are really just very archaic quarterly works well you give it a guarantee you need us back you know company comes back free of charge during that quarter but each quarter is unique you know right now we're in the winter and we do have uh, you know the spiders as I've mentioned on past programs the spiders are, are teaming uh, we've got our scorpions that are that are out and about and in large part because the crickets have really kind of settled down that's a fall insect okay so the crickets are getting quiet well you know scorpions are hungry you know so they're looking for food and the temperatures being what they are uh, insects are cold-blooded so they do need uh, temperature control in order to regulate their metabolism. So scorpions are going to be looking for that warmer area. And uh, so we got our scorpions, we got our spiders, and then, of course, rodents. Right. Rodents, you know. Come springtime, mm -hmm. boy, you start getting those American roaches, those large sewer roaches. They come out. Bees start really pushing, and wasps, all those spring blossoms kick in, and we get a great deal of, you know, some, some flying insects, bees, and so forth. Your summer, you've got your ants, you've got... Uh, uh, you know, the scorpions uh -huh. are kicking in, you know, a lot of other beetles right. and, 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 and the crickets kind of get started a little bit. And then there's the magic season of all, the fall. It's like Africa here. I mean, it's insane. It's the <laughs> tropics. <laughs> it's, Florida has come west. You know, wow. everything that crawls and flies is out August, September and October. Insane. So each quarter has its pressure and you want to have a seasonal treatment every yeah. three months. I don't, before we move on to talk about the charity work that you do, do you guys do weeds as well? We do. We do weed control. Uh, we do it in combination. We do provide that uh, all-important pre-emergent onto the soil to prevent weeds from growing. And then, of course, we have what we call a topical spray or a knockdown. And that's going to be for those uh, little seedlings that germinate. You get those you know, little green things popping up. And uh, we come in and treat those. So you, you got you got both. Mm -hmm. So is that part of the um, pest, pre pest prevention treatment, or you have as an addition? It's it's a different service. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so everything's categorized. You know, okay. your general pest control or what we call crawling insects. Those are going to be your bugs. Okay. Right? Termite control is exactly that. Right, we're dealing with termites, and then you've got rodent control, and then you've got weed control. Those are your big four. And then lastly, there's a thing called vector control, and those are going to be 
uh, pests that can cause some some illnesses like bed bugs, mosquitoes, flies. That falls under what we call vector control. Okay. So five major areas of, of pest service. Okay. Yep. I always thought vector was uh, mosquitoes. I didn't know it encompassed so many things. It does. It sure does, yeah. In Oregon, mosquitoes are so prevalent that all you had to do was call the county and they'd come out and take <laughs> care of them. But I always wondered how if they just treated my yard, how the bugs knew to stay outside of my property boundary and yeah. not just keep coming. Sure. Well, let's start. Let's ask um, a little bit about the nonprofit and charity type work and then different involvement, I'm sure, volunteer yeah. and so forth that I you're love it. doing. I love it. Yeah. You know, as I might have shared in the past, I had a wonderful 18-year career uh, with a very large company here in town, family, really. And uh, that's where I grew up. Right. You know? And uh, somewhere along the way in the, the last couple of years there, I really wanted to get more out in the community. And, and I, the reason why I started Rego in 2008 was I wanted to control my time and my resources so that I could give. You know, Rego Pest is really about giving to the community. Uh, that's what we're developing more and more each year. Uh, one of the things that we did right out of the gate, we, we partnered with an organization at the time was called Sold No More. Uh -huh. mm. And they used to put on a comedy show once a year. Uh, I think they held it at Victory Assembly there on, on Ruth Roth. Right. And the idea was to laugh you have a comedy, right? But here, here's the thing. The program, Sold No More, uh, was an organ a nonprofit organization that fought uh, anti-sex trafficking. Okay. Uh, uh, wow. At-risk children. And so, so how do you connect comedy with, with that sort of grave issue? Well, the idea was, you know, it is so grave. It is so serious that we wanted to take just one evening in the year and, and, and just laugh, just let go. And uh, because the enormity of that issue uh, grows every year, yes. especially mm -hmm. in Arizona. Mm -hmm. So we've been supporting uh, Sold No More, which by the way, today is now called Power Over Predators. It's called POP or POP, and that's Power Over Predators, a fantastic nonprofit. Uh, we have been their main sponsor for many, many years. They have now absolutely gone, uh, I think global, to be honest. And so now what we've done is um, we now sponsor multiple junior high and high schools. Uh, we are the sponsor of that school, and we support the tools and materials for power over predator staff uh -huh. to go in and educate the students on campus uh, what to look for and how to avoid these, these predators. So oh, that, that was one of the big ones. The other is, as uh, I think I might have shared with both of you personally off, you know, off, off, the, off the side there, but... Uh, I've been part of the foster program for many, many years. Uh, uh, I had the privilege of caring for many at-risk children. And so we uh, look for opportunities to support local foster care agencies. Uh, you know, these children that, that are born, ex uh, you know, unfortunately right. drug exposed. And really the end game there is to support the parents as well. Mm -hmm. And if, and by, you know, if, gosh, that's the big if, if they really lean in and get themselves taken care of, we want to see that reunification. Right. And so we support that process. Uh, we're all about making sure those kids are healthy and well, and then anything we can do to support the agencies that help those parents. Uh, boy, we've now gone over overseas. I have had the pleasure of being in India and Kenya wow. and uh, doing ministries in those countries. And uh, we support multiple, and I mean multiple, uh, nonprofits that go and, and do education, training, uh, mercy homes, building wells, uh, we fund the uh, the caring and the development of communities uh, in other countries, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Uganda and Rwanda as well, and the Congo. And the goal there is to just be another resource. There's just, you know, be a part of that amazing community that offers, uh, you know, funds and, and whatever else to, to make sure that those people have a fighting chance to thwart off disease, have clean water, have a place to sleep, and then, of course, give them just some life skills, you know, so. Let us know how long you've been doing it. Since 2008, this has been your, yeah, your, yeah, your dream? Yeah, we've been doing that since 2008. Uh, we've got a couple of other different things that we're involved in locally. Uh, but, uh, you and know, we... If I, if I may, yeah, Rigo, you said something about the foster program. Is it, is it a name or is it just a foster program? Well, I call it the foster program. But what we do is we connect with, uh, you know, like Casas Adobe. Okay, so, okay. You know, uh, Christian community and, and, okay. and you know, our, uh, I think Baptist Association and so forth. Any agency, Devereaux is a big one, Devereaux of Arizona. And what we want to do is just offer ourselves as, as a, uh, a resource. You know, can we support what your cause is? 
and uh, we'll put on some training. You know, I'll even just go, for example, uh, just recently I had the privilege of being at Teen Challenge and I'm standing behind the line mm -hmm. just feeding uh, all these, uh, you know, uh, yeah. folks coming through with their kids. And I, we just want to make ourselves available. It has nothing to do with bugs. It has nothing to do with earning business. Right. It has everything to do with a humanitarian, uh, you know, giving, uh, uh, meeting the needs of, of the needy. And it's, I'm humbled because it's so wonderful to hear you say that. We talk about this off, off air. You know, we try not to tell everybody everything we're doing. We just do it behind, behind the scene because yeah. we care about it so much. Yeah. But I think sometimes it has to be, people have to know that these things are out there and you're doing your part. And so we understand that this is Regal Pest Control doing this as a community outreach for people. Yeah. He's doing his business, but he also is in there to make sure he's helping the community become better. Yeah, absolutely. And the one that I'm really most proud of, if I may, and I'll just do a plug here, but, um, uh, you know, we've got a couple of uh, counselors, you know, uh, family counselors and so forth that uh, we partnered with. And yes. I always look in first before I look out. And first, I want to make sure I'm okay. Yes. You know, and then secondly, uh, our employees. And so any of our employees that are struggling with something, uh, and if, they, if they're willing and, you know, they come to us and, and we have great relationships with our folks, we, uh, we make the resource of counseling available for them. You know, great. so we support the counselors, our employees, no fee. They go in, they get cared, whatever it is, marital or, or, or emotional or spiritual, whatever it is. And so one of the big ones that we're really proud of is, uh, you know, some of the uh, local counselors that we work with. Uh -huh. and, uh, and every now and then we'll come across a customer that, that really needs help. And I'll give them a card and say, listen, I want you to call this gal or this guy. And if you're willing, uh, they, they may be able to come alongside you and help you. Great. It's on us. Right. Wow. Love that. Love that. You know, I had no idea. I've known you for years. Had no idea how much you were doing to invest in our community. And that really is where our heart is as well as yeah. we want to see Tucson thriving, healthy families, healthy homes. Um, healthy hearts. Yeah, you bet. Yep. Healthy spirits, healthy yeah. souls, healthy hearts. Yeah, that's you got to have those things and make things going. That's it. But again, this is about in the last minute, Rico. So please let everybody know how they can get a hold of uh, one of the best uh, pest prevention companies in Tucson. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, we're really proud. Uh, our office number is uh, area code 520-744-6177. That's the office number. And then uh, our website is regopest.com. That's regopest.com. And don't forget that you've been win you won uh, four years in a row as the as the best prevention yeah. in Tucson. Yeah, and you know what? And, and it happens very organically. We just invite everybody to vote, and they vote. We don't buy the votes. We don't uh, do any extra promotion. Congratulations on that. That's thank you, guys. Wonderful. Hey, we want to thank Horizon Inspections, Indie Realty, Inspired Life Mortgage, Rego Pest Prevention, and Atomic Nutrition for sponsoring. And we will catch you next week on the I Am Real Estate Show. Thank you, Rico. Hey, great to be here.